In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw tree groups for a large-scale landscape master plan. First, here are a few common styles of tree groups you'll often see in landscape and urban design master plans. The first style is trees that are spread out randomly. This works great for linear spaces. The second style is tree groups shaped like clouds. They can be big or small depending on the space. The third type is more common for street or sidewalk trees arranged in a straight line. You can leave some small gaps between them to make it look more natural. And the fourth one is my favorite, a two-layered group of trees. This style adds more depth to the master plan and makes the overall composition look more dynamic and visually rich. For smaller scale plans, this type is also quite common. Detailed trees on the top with cloud-shaped tree groups or shrubs underneath, in this tutorial, I'll be focusing on large-scale master plans. So let's go ahead and start drawing trees on a real plan. I'll start by turning on the brush settings panel from the window menu at the top of Photoshop. Make sure you're using the hard round brush tip instead of the soft round one. Here I'm adjusting the brush tip spacing. I like to set it somewhere between 95% and 110%. Next, turn on Shape Dynamics and adjust the size jitter. Then enable scattering. I usually set the scatter to around 120%, 150% and the count to 2. For larger tree groups, you can increase the count to 4. Also, make sure to turn on Color Dynamics. The higher the values on each bar, the more color variation you'll get among the trees. Here are a few examples as I adjust the numbers. I recommend keeping the values lower, around 5 to 10%, if you're going for a spring or summer vibe. For an autumn look, you can increase the values for richer, warmer tones. Alright, everything's set, let's start drawing the trees. I like to begin by picking the grass color first to set the overall tone, then choose a shade that's slightly darker than the grass for the trees. Next, adjust the tree size. For large scale plants, the trees are usually about the width of a building. It doesn't need to be exact. This is more about visual balance than accuracy. Then I'll start clicking and dragging to draw the tree groups. Some areas will be larger or longer, others smaller. The goal is to keep the overall plan balanced and dynamic. Don't fill up all the open space. Make sure to leave some gaps and breathing room. We'll be adding another layer of trees later. You can see that since we turned on color dynamics, the cloud-shaped tree groups now have natural color variations. We can press Ctrl and U to adjust the color tone. Here I'm increasing the saturation of the trees to make them stand out more. Next, go to the Layers panel and double-click the tree layer to open the layer style window. Turn on the shadow effect. The direction of the shadow should be based on the site's geographic location or the existing building shadows. I prefer to keep the shadow light and subtle, not too dark or too large. Then create a new layer underneath the tree layer to add more depth to the overall master plan. Use the brush again, but this time choose a lighter tree color than the previous layer. Draw beneath the top tree layer just like before, but turn off the shadow effect and lower the layer's transparency. For this layer, you don't need to draw too much, usually just on one side of the top tree groups to add a bit of depth and layering. The lighter tree layer is also great for filling in small empty spaces on the master plan. If we only use one layer of trees with a single color, the overall drawing can look flat and less dynamic. Next, we can add linear street trees along the sides of the roads. 
If it's a straight road, you can simply hold shift while drawing to create a clean line of trees. But for curved or irregular roads like this one, it's better to use the magic wand tool. Just press the shortcut W. Select the road area, then go to select, modify, expand to extend the selection by a set distance. Right click the dashed line and choose Make Work Path. You'll see it turn into a path shape. Then right click again, select Stroke Path, choose Brush as the tool and click OK. Now your trees are perfectly aligned along both sides of the road. I like to make the street trees a bit smaller and use a darker color with slightly larger spacing between each one. Then right click and select stroke path again. This gives us a clean, accurate line of trees very quickly. After that, press Esker to exit the path and delete any extra trees that might overlap onto the road. Using the same method, I'm going to draw the sidewalk trees for the rest of the roads. This is a really useful trick for large-scale master plans. It saves a lot of time when adding street trees. Use the magic wand tool. Just press the shortcut W. Select the road area, then go to Select, Modify, Expand to widen the selection a bit. Right click the dashed line and choose Make Work Path. It'll turn into a path line. Then right click again, choose Stroke Path, select Brush as the tool and click OK. Now your trees will line up perfectly along both sides of the road. The last step is optional. I like to add a watercolor texture as a layer mask on top of the tree canopies. It gives the image a softer, hand-drawn look with a bit more artistic depth. Since watercolor textures have natural color variations, they make the tree groups look more realistic and organic. I then adjust the texture's saturation and hue to better match the original tree colors. At this point, we've almost finished the master plan drawing. I'll just add a few final touches, like some smaller groups of trees, and then the master plan is complete. You can use the same brush settings for your own master plan renderings. I'll be making another video soon on how to create a realistic large scale master plan, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to get my tree brushes for Photoshop or Illustrator, check out the store link below. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll reply as soon as I can. Thank you.